how effective are we overall at losing weight as humans? Not so good because most of the dietary strategies that we employ are not focused on improving the quality of the food, nor are they necessarily focused on reversing the pattern of a westernized diet. They're more focused on simply reducing the westernized diet and eating less of a bunch of bad foods. I'm thinking of things like Weight Watchers or other calorie restricted patterns. That's exactly the same problem that got you into this mess and got you obese. You're just eating less of it. There's a much easier way, a much better way long-term to lose weight, and it's improving the quality of your diet. So this is an interesting study looking at the probability of an obese person attaining normal body weight. This is a cohort study using electronic records. They say that the probability of attaining normal weight or maintaining weight loss is low. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. So in this study, there was a maximum follow-up of nine years. There were 1,200 men and 2,200 women who attained a normal body weight. They said that the annual probability of attaining normal weight was one in 210 for men and one in 124 for women, increasing to one in 1,290 for men and one in 677 for women with morbid obesity. <laughs> the annual probability of achieving a 5% weight reduction was one in eight for men and one in seven for women with morbid obesity. Why is it so hard for us to lose weight well? I've already talked about it because most of the dietary strategies out there are calorie prisons. You wouldn't wanna to go to a state penitentiary. Prison is no fun. Well, restricting your calories is essentially calorie prison. It's horrible. Eventually you are going to want to do everything you can to dig out of there to break out of there. This is Shawshank redemption for your freaking metabolism, for your brain. You have 350,000 years of human evolution that are telling you to break out <laughs> of a prison that you are putting yourself in by restricting calories. There's an easier way and it's focusing on food quality. Now, at the beginning of this podcast, I also want to address the calories in, calories out model. This is essentially thermodynamics. Yes, it works. If you eat more calories, then you metabolize, then you oxidize, then you burn, you will gain weight. The problem with this equation is that it's very hard to know what your calories out are. It's not as simple as simply using a program on the internet to calculate your basal metabolic rate and then doing some back of the envelope calculations based on how active you are. If you are over-exercising, for instance, you may increase your cortisol, you may lower your thyroid hormone, you may increase your reverse T3, all of those things will slow your overall metabolism, which will lead to a lower calories out. I also think there's very interesting evidence that the quality of the foods you eat, the quality of your calories in can negatively or positively affect your calories out. I'll show evidence later in this podcast that seed oils, polyunsaturated fatty acids of the omega-6 variety can affect thyroid hormone, transport, metabolism, and binding at the level of the nuclear T3 receptor in a negative way. So the quality of the foods you eat can affect your metabolism on the way out. That's the problem with the calories in, calories out model in my opinion. It's too simplified. You can't simply eat Pop-Tarts and expect to be healthy long-term or expect to achieve weight loss long-term because your overall health will suffer. You may lose weight originally, but I can guarantee you that your hormones will tank and your metabolism will suffer, your motivation will suffer, you will become nutrient depleted, and you will not retain that weight loss long-term. That's not health. That's not a good way to lose weight. That is how you don't want to lose weight. If you don't change the quality of your foods, I fear that your weight loss will not be sustainable and that you will lose health as you are trying to lose weight, which essentially negates the whole point of the endeavor. The other thing to mention is that over-exercising is probably not great for weight loss. Look at the success of people on The Biggest Loser in keeping their weight off long-term. It's abysmal. These people over-exercise like crazy. And for many of the same reasons that I've talked about, their hormones tank, they have negative effects on all sorts of metrics of their overall health, overall vitality, and they can't keep themselves in a healthy state. They never really were in a healthy state. They've put themselves in calorie-restricted prison and by God, they're gonna break out. This is similar to the work of Herman Ponser, who wrote the book Burn. I had him on my podcast a couple of years ago, and we talked about his hypothesis that for a lot of humans, like the Hadza, who he studied and looked at their cardiovascular health, which was very good, 
their basal metabolic rate changes based on the amount of exercise they're doing. This means that over-exercising and spending hours and hours doing cardio thinking you're going to burn off the donut doesn't really work. Sometimes if you work out a bunch, you're going to decrease your overall metabolism and you won't end up burning more calories than someone who is doing light exercise or much less exercise than you are doing. What we do know pretty clearly is that having more lean muscle mass on your body will elevate your lean body mass. So as I've talked about in the past, I am not a fan of chronic cardio, as Mark Sisson would say. Running a whole bunch makes you a smaller version of yourself. It doesn't make you more muscular, it makes you a smaller version of what you are now. If you are a little pudgy, running is probably gonna make you a little pudgy, smaller version of yourself. It's not going to give you the effects you want long-term. How do you lose weight? A key cornerstone of this is having lean body mass something that probably includes lifting heavy things and having a good androgen receptor density, something that both men and women can benefit from. If you listened to last week's podcast, you'll know that soy, isoflavonoids in soy, like genistein, can negatively affect androgen receptor density in men. So again, the quality of the foods you eat, the biochemical, the neurohormonal, the hormonal effects of the foods you eat will influence your basal metabolism, will influence your ability to burn calories, and that is how you lose weight. Ultimately, I think you want your basal metabolic rate to be as high as possible, and you don't want to overexercise. More on that later. But calories in, calories out, of course it works. That's thermodynamics. It's highly oversimplified, and it's not as simple as just restricting the food you eat. That doesn't work long-term.